The Lord be with you, beloved Pillar community. My name is Anna. I'm one of the pastors here. It's a gift to be with you in this way. We all gather from so many different places, different places geographically, different places spiritually or emotionally, asking questions of God, gathering with hearts of faith, hearts of curiosity, hearts of longing, and it's all welcome here as we gather to worship God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So as a way of preparing our hearts and minds for worship, let's take a few minutes. The ensemble will lead us. as we gather to worship, hear these words from the book of Revelation. Great and amazing are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. Let's continue to sing together, holy, holy, holy.
again from the book of Revelation. Great and amazing are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. When we gather to worship, we gather around a just, true, and holy God. And so we have the freedom to bring whatever we carry with us and place it at the feet of Jesus. Honestly, we can come before God and pray to him about what is really happening, how we're really feeling, the way the world really is. And so for these next few moments, we're going to pray together. We'll begin with a spoken prayer and continue by singing. Pray with us, please. Holy One, we call to you and name you as eternal, ever-present, and boundless in love. Yet there are times, God, when we fail to recognize you in the dailiness of our lives. Sometimes shame clenches tightly around our hearts. We hide our true feelings. Sometimes fear makes us small, and we miss the chance to speak from our strength. Sometimes doubt invades our hopefulness. Holy God, in the day-to-day, -day, sunrise to sunset, remind us again of your holy presence near us and in us. Free us from shame and doubt. Help us to see you in the moment-by-moment -moment possibilities to live honestly, act courageously, and live in your wisdom. Father in heaven, have mercy on us. We come before you and lay it down at your feet as we continue in prayer by singing. Your heart was tired, feared the worst and felt the fire. Lay it all down, lay it all down. Filled with all those anxious thoughts, and your doubts become your God.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone. See, everything has become new. Believe this and be at peace. The peace that we receive from the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus enters into every area of our life. All the things that we do and the relationships we tend to, the communities we inhabit. And we also want to do that as a community here at Pillar. So just a couple notes toward those ends. We hope that you'll Continue to stay connected to our website and our weekly email that goes out on Wednesdays. That's the best way to stay up to date on what's happening week to week here at Pillar. If you're not signed up for that, send a message over to office at pillarchurch.com and we'll get you on that list. Also on our website, there are ways to give financially to support the mission and ministry of Pillar. Some notes for the weeks to come. We want you to save the date for Sunday, August 28th at 4 o'clock. We're going to be led in a jazz concert experience by Ivan Akinsima and his friends. We're going to host it on the front lawn of Pillar. So bring your chairs, bring your snacks and your kids and your friends. We'll enjoy some beautiful music together led by Ivan. This fall, we're kicking off another Alpha series, and we're asking you to, for the next few weeks, prayerfully consider those who you might know who might want to experience Alpha. Alpha is a place to explore the deepest questions about life and faith. So maybe over the next few weeks, you'll think of two or three people in your life who may want to try Alpha this fall that you can invite, and so we Uh, ask you to, in prayer, consider that. And in just a few weeks, we are going to be welcoming back Pastor John Brown and his family. They've been uh, on sabbatical for these last few months. And in a couple weeks, on August 15th, uh, John will start transitioning back into the pastoral life here at Pillar. He'll be preaching among us on August 28th and then Uh, back full-time on September 1. So we ask that you continue to be mindful of the Browns as they transition back, and we are full of gratitude that this season has been one of rest and renewal for John and the whole family. So please continue to keep them in prayer as we welcome them back. For now, we gather around God's Word, God's Word that offers us 
the story of salvation in Jesus and what it means for the whole world. And so for these next few moments, let's prepare our hearts to hear that word. We'll sing Blessed Jesus at your word. Friends, I'm sure you've noticed that our preaching schedule this summer has been a whole smattering of passages from across the Bible, and that's been kind of fun. We're rejoining God's big story from creation through the Old Testament and into the Gospels in our Advent and Lent journey. That's all starting again on August 28th the All Things New series. So before then, we have a couple weeks. Jenna and I thought it would be fun to collaborate together and do a mini sermon series. So this week, we're going to listen together to Proverbs 1. And next week in the recording, we'll get to listen together with Pastor Jenna to Psalm 1. We're calling it an invitation to wisdom and prayer. And here's why I think the invitation to wisdom and prayer is really aptly timed. I don't know about you, but at the end of summer, it typically feels like we're on the precipice of something. And that's more shaped by an academic calendar rather than the church year. But still, I feel it. This is actually my first semester in a really long time where I'm not signing up for classes and buying textbooks and starting off strong with a really organized planner and then letting it all fall apart throughout the semester. Anyway, it's the first semester in a long time that I'm not a student, but it still feels that our rhythms as a community, maybe because of our connection to Hope College, our love for college students, high school students among us, elementary students among us. We're we're living into rhythms of a semester. And so whether you're older or younger, it can feel at the end of summer like we're on the precipice of something new. Fall is right around the corner, and I wonder what that means for you. It could mean a new job, an old job, searching for a job. It could mean new questions about God, 
the same old questions about God you've been asking for a while, new relationships, new seasons of relationships, or old, tired relationships, new longings and old longings, and maybe underneath it all, we're still asking the question, what is the good life? And where is God in the midst of that? Sometimes in the fall, it can feel like we're on the precipice of something new. And that's the very moment when I think an invitation to wisdom and an invitation to prayer are so timely. So this week we'll listen together to Proverbs 1, and next week you can tune in for Psalm 1. I want to describe a genre of books of the Bible called wisdom literature. There are three books in the Bible that fit into this category, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the book of Job. And they're books that are asking the same kinds of questions a long time ago that we're still asking today. They're books that are asking what kind of world do we live in, and what does it look like to live well in that world? In short, what is the good life, and where is God in the midst of it? So listen with me to Proverbs 1. I'm curious what you'll notice. It's a chapter that sets the stage for a life of wisdom. The Proverbs of Solomon son of David, king of Israel. For learning about wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for gaining instruction in wise dealing, righteousness, justice, and equity, to teach shrewdness to the simple and knowledge and prudence to the young, let the wise too hear and gain in learning and the discerning acquire skill to understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my child, your father's instruction, and do not reject your mother's teaching, for they are a fair garland for your head and pendants for your neck. My child, if sinners entice you, do not consent to them, If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood, let us wantonly ambush the innocent. If, like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of costly things and fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot among us, we will all have one purse. My child, do not walk in their way. Keep your foot from their paths. For they run to evil, and they hurry to shed blood. For in vain is the net baited, while the bird is looking on. Yes, they lie in wait to kill themselves. They set an ambush for their own lives. Such is the end of all who are greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its possessors. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. Then they will seek me diligently, but will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be seated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without fear of disaster. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's 
so much there, and in many ways it's sort of a daunting passage with a lot of gravitas. So here's the direction we'll go. In our invitation to wisdom and invitation to prayer, I want to focus on a definition and a question. First, a definition. I wonder for you what comes to mind when you think of wisdom. What is wisdom? Maybe it's someone in your life who personified wisdom, who was a really clear example of the wise way. Maybe a mentor or a friend, someone whose words you could trust, someone who lived with integrity. Wisdom defined through a commentary I was reading sounded a bit like this. Experiential knowledge, the effort to discover order in human life, skill for life, compressed experience, a quality of mind and spirit that directs all human activity toward its proper end, or a flash of insight into the repeatable situations of life in the world. I think there's some truth in those definitions. And I also think they're a little bit vague. What does specifically Christian wisdom look like? And here's why I love reading the Old Testament with the assurance that we also have the New Testament. Our starting point for the Old Testament is always to read backwards. What I mean by that is that we read as ones who know Christ have been befriended by Christ, and who find our lives in Christ. And so reading Proverbs Christologically, and what that means is just in light of Christ, changes everything. Because Christ Jesus has become for us wisdom from God, or at least that's the way the Apostle Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians. Christ has become for us wisdom from God. What is wisdom? Where can we find our definition? Wisdom is a person. Wisdom is Christ himself. So in Christ, we can choose the fear of the Lord, like in verse 29. And by the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we can be people who choose to listen, like in verse 33. And it's all held in this conviction that Christians have that God can actually guide us in how we live. That's profound. The wisdom of God that God used to create the world is wisdom that God also gives to us to help us live in alignment with God's good, true, beautiful purposes for the world. And, and living a life of wisdom isn't actually up to us because Christ is the perfectly wise one walking the path of wisdom on our behalf, ahead of us, for us. So when you read Proverbs, which I'm suggesting you might, as a part of this invitation to wisdom and prayer, read as one who is already walking the path of wisdom because you belong to Christ. And be careful and awake and at the ready because wisdom and with it, the Christ life is a countercultural endeavor. Here's the good news Christian life is actually not about being better and doing better. Actually, this invitation to wisdom, to life with Christ, is a gift from God. It's a gift. Not towards some level of moral performance, but because God's heart for us is to taste life with Jesus here and now and someday fully when all things are restored and made new, it's not an invitation to a life free from suffering, but it's an invitation to the wise way with Christ, the way of laying our lives down for the sake of the world. So what is wisdom? Wisdom is a person. Wisdom is Christ himself. All the knowledge and goodness and kindness of God expressed to us in a person we can know and love, a person who gave everything for us. 
That's wisdom. To live a life of wisdom is to live a life with Jesus. That's our definition. What is wisdom? Wisdom is Jesus. Second, a question. Here's the question that I think the writer of Proverbs is inviting us to when we hear wisdom crying at the street corner. The question is, will you listen? Verse 33 says, those who listen to me, wisdom, Christ, will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. And then look at verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. The message paraphrase puts it this way. Start with God. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. So here's the question. Will we listen? If it's true that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, will we listen? Wisdom cries out. Will you make space to listen? To listen to the voice of wisdom, to listen to God's voice. Imagine the landscape of verses 20 and 21. Wisdom crying out in the street. Imagine the busiest moments of your life. The public square where you find yourself. It was a noisy street corner. Imagine the hospital, the clinic, the admissions office, wherever you find yourself. What might God's wisdom be crying out in that place? Wisdom is not just crying out in our perfect devotional chair and cup of coffee situation in the morning. Wisdom is calling out in the streets. And wisdom looks like justice, equity, and righteousness. Wisdom is not just a short program of nice things to say. It's actually a very public endeavor. To embrace the Jesus story of death and resurrection is to embrace a certain story of wisdom that is quite public. It's a story that calls out to us and to the world in the most public of places. If the Christ story is true, it's bursting forth with wisdom through every nook and cranny of the world, every marketplace, street corner, and classroom. So will you listen? Will we be a people who listen? For the voice of Christ, our true wisdom, calling out in the most private and the most public of places. So let's start with God. The first step of wisdom, the first step of listening, is bowing down to God. Will you listen? What might that look like for you? listening to God's wisdom in Christ. Maybe it's creating space, those early morning moments to listen to God in the silence. Or maybe it's listening for Christ's wisdom as a sustaining voice in your most difficult of relationships. Maybe it's entering into a rhythm of praying the Psalms and reading the Proverbs as a way to give ear to God's voice of wisdom calling out amidst the noise of our world. As we continue in worship and come to the table, let's take these next few minutes to imagine together what a year or a month or a day sustained by the wisdom of Christ might look like. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, we get to come to the table together where we taste true wisdom offered for us in a way that's embodied, that's tangible, that we can taste and experience because Christ offers us his very self. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he was with his friends and after he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he poured it out and he gave it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Friends, this is the body and the blood of Christ given for you. Feel free to partake in your homes where you are as we continue in worship. If you'd consider yourself a Christian, you're welcome at this table. If you're not at that place in life or in faith or for any other reason, choose not to partake. We just invite you to consider what you've heard. Become aware of the questions you're asking about life, about true wisdom, about God. And I would love to have a conversation. Feel free to shoot me an email, Anna at PillarChurch.com. Friends, come hungry for the table is set. All things are ready. Christ offers himself to us here and now. Amen. Father, Son, and Spirit, as you have fed us at this table, we continue to pray that your Spirit would be with us, sending us out to wherever we go, the places we are, the people we encounter, to be a light and a, offer the hope of Jesus Christ to all we see. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, let's continue singing our sending song together. you are about to enter every sector of public life to claim it for Christ. So as you do, may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.